okay so this one is lecture number 1 and here i will start so i will start this course so i will talk about introduction to probability course and then for next then i will talk about few basic concept of probability if time permit so before of that i need to talk about logistic of this course so what are the process what are the uh, syllabus course outcome other kind of things i will talk in detail here and after that if time permit then we will go to discuss about uh, few basic uh, starting concept of probability that means introduction to probability we can say that so coming to outline of this course uh, uh, here in this very first lecture i am going to talk about introduction to probability course it is very much essential course for various things various thing simply i would like to say so coming to a specifically this lecture uh, first i will talk about what is the course information what is uh, what is this course then i will talk about if time permit then i will talk about what is probability so simply i, I told you in one layman way probability is the measure of randomness we try to measure randomness so if there is randomness around us everywhere i told that randomness is there except motion of planet everywhere you will observe randomness so if they, everywhere randomness is there so you need to know mathematical approach to quantify that randomness so probability is providing that uh, uh, approach how to quantify randomness so that's why it is very uh, very much important to know what is the probability so simply uh, one one line answer is probability is the measure of randomness simply we can say that but how measure is coming it is coming through certain law thanks to kolmogorov that modern approach what we call it then i will talk about once we will have some idea of probability what is probability then we will talk about how to proceed in probability in order to quantify the measuredness okay measure, measure so in order to quantify we have to come some notion of basic concept some so that notion is helping to uh, give a proper or, or Uh, what we call a systematic approach to quantify the randomness so that we will talk about those basic concept so i will you will see that if you understand those basic concept in a very clear way i am very sure that you can solve any probabilistic question if you understand so this one is the foundation what basic courses i will talk foundation of measure, measuring probability randomness foundation so everyone have to be very attentive while understanding this one and what you do best way of learning is that unlearn things whatever you have learned in your previous classes during plus 2 or something like that forget about that just be on present present and try to focus on here and raise the question it is the best way of learning raise the question and try to understand everything then i will talk about uh, uh, in the basic once we will have idea of basic concept of probability then we will introduce probability measure how to measure the probability under kolmogorov approach or uh, and in that process we, we will have some law so one law what i discuss about uniform law another way you can say that equally likely situation so if uh, the uh, starting law what we call it we don't know anything if you don't know anything so what you do the starting law uniform law equally likely proceeding with so there is a uh, beautiful theorem that we call it uh, uh, limit theorem a uh, central limit theorem that will say that uh, whatever law a starting law would be there if your sample size is greater than equal to 32 you will see that that law is converging to gaussian law probably normal normal distribution have you heard normal distribution gaussian distribution no worry people are generally saying that uh, if you are taking error error the error is always what this uh, random nature if you take error anywhere so uh, people are trying to give law for that uh, uh, distribution of that error happens to be gaussian or normal distribution you will see that so normal distribution is really one kind of uh, what we call it uh, like uh, in sequence you have already seen that limit concept so if you are having a sequence of numbers like 1 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 1 by 5 so infinite number of real numbers are there infinite number of real number uh, infinite number of real number uh, there okay so how you can say that uh, how we can memorize those numbers how we can easily conceptualize those number 
so one interesting way of conceptualizing those number is finding limit of that sequence so that sequence is 1 by n no? it is converging to 0 when n is very large so that is the concept so that's why we say that 0 is the limit of sequence 1 by n what is meaning of that after leaving few terms almost all eventually all the terms are very near to 0 so that we say that now in the similar way in probability central limit theorem is saying that whatever probability law you are starting at the beginning if you're after some n and what we call samples there would be sample size if sample size is greater than value of n is greater than equal to 32 then you will say that your that probability law is converging to Gaussian law normal law that conversion that's why name another name of that normal law normal distribution so whatever distribution you will have it is going to converge to Gaussian distribution normal distribution same limiting approach that's why it is we are calling it central limit theorem you will see that so forget about uh, uh, any I always try to relate with uh, easy what we have going so simply you will see that relation here as well so those things we will discuss in so whatever law would be there that law in law going to converge to that normal law where so basic law that that happens to be uniform law then you will go for non-uniform law that journey I, I will also talk about how you can go from uniform law to non-uniform law definitely non-uniform law is better approach because in this world nothing is uniform in this world here even i can talk about uh, uh, if i'm saying that uh, i'm selecting any of you in equally likely pattern then it may be damp it may be bias why if i go through your grade and something or previous history or something like that some information if further i am getting some information now things would be changed things would be changed so that's why nothing uh, Generally, in ideal situation, nothing is in, uh, uniform. Uniform, but we have to proceed with in uniform way. Then we need to know how to can go from uniform law to non-uniform law. That means equally likely to non-equally likely. That things we will discuss in detail. So coming to first part of this lecture, that course information. This course name is you know that it is probability. So I will, I will first talk about objective outcome and goal. What is the goal of uh, this course? What you will? So there are many re remarkable progress in engineering science using computational te technique from probability. Computational technique. What is the meaning of computational technique? That means uh, I will try to explain probability in computational. What is the meaning of computational technique? Using the algorithm. I mentioned that algorithm is where algorithm is coming. Prior to algorithm, you need to know. So you are having a problem. You are having a problem. No. Then in order to solve that problem, you need to know some method. What method you are using? Once you are having method, then if you are having very good understanding of that method, then you are converting that method into algorithm in order to solve in computer. So you need to know method. What is that method? That method is the computation method. Computational technique, what we call it. You are able to compute things. So, suppose uh, you are having data from somewhere else and you don't know from which distribution that data is coming. So, you have, you have to come up with some kind of model. That model would contain, there are various approaches, simplest approach right now in degree. Uh, so simply, uh, I would like to say that uh, you are having data. Okay, data at the end. So, if you, uh, you want to know that everything about data, then you want to do each individual data points. Okay. Is it, is it uh, right approach to go to each individual data point? It will take time. If data is large enough, it will take time. So, what is the better approach? What is? Random. What is? Random. So the is not available. You are just from here. You are having data, given data. So what you do? A starting phase is uh, try to find different dimensions of that data. What is your representation? Everyone might have already heard that uh, MP, MA. What is full form of MP? 
Member of Parliament. <laughs> what is another name of uh, other journey we are? So how they they try to convey themselves in Parliament? And the fertility of that area. What is the name of people? They are fertility the area of their own they have been selected. What is the name of people? They are one for a If you try to see that person by look, by behavior of that person, you can see that other person of that area might have seen the same as the player. So what is the name of that? That repertory means without me. So if you have a data, so how you can convert the data into single form? Take every of you. Me, medium, mode, whatever you want. Okay. Single, single law. From the seventh thing, you have to single law of one. So what one you are getting that you are public? So that MP and we caught it from several persons by voting. So voting is just to be several persons. So it is one kind of average behavior of all the people of that area. Average behavior. So you need to know, you have to unify. So here, then what? You have to compute. So competition is coming. So competition is coming. So the objective of this course, it would be two-folded. First, you have to develop the solid understanding of probabilistic modeling. That means if you are having a probabilistic phenomena, how you can convert that into probabilistic model. Okay. With and with, then you will learn computational technique. Uh, with the help of that, you will understand this probabilistic modeling and further conclusion, further consequences. That one is the first. Or second, you have to come up with new results and new applications. Various new results will come, then various applications would come. This, is, this would be the objective of this course. And outcome, you can use this technique in your incoming academic or industrial life. Okay. What does it mean? That means after this, you may take various courses. So this course will help to so understand those courses, help to solve problem from those courses. Also, once you, after finishing here, you will get job, you will join some industry. Okay. So there also this course will help if you understand this technique. This, all these probabilistic techniques, then it will help to solve problem there in, in your industry life. So uh, I, I would like to summarize here. So goal is here. I would like to teach you how to region precisely. How to region precisely about randomness. So if you are going through in a very systematic approach, you have to region out in a precise way. Otherwise, definitely you will get wrong answer. And most important of all, you have to think in a probabilistic way. Think probabilistic because everything around us random in nature. So think in a probabilistic way. So sim simply when someone is saying that probability, then what does it mean? It simply says that something more than common sense. Something more than common sense. And uh, some, if it is something more than common sense, what does it mean? You have to believe in those laws. You have to be very much precise. You have to understand what are those laws. In mathematics, if you follow the law, you won't commit mistakes. Now, coming to syllabus of this course, there would be four modules. In the first module, I will talk about elementary probability. And it is just coming from what you have ended in your plus two. That means probability, that basic concept of probability, sample space event, and then uh, empirical formula, what we had already discussed. Then uh, we'll discuss about conditional probability. Conditional probability is very much interesting. Then if you are having very, because what is happening that when you are defining probability of an event, it's fine. But suppose you are getting few information. While defining this one, you are getting additional information or partial information. So due to that, conditioning is coming here. So conditioning is what? It is a technique to ease out to solve probabilistic problem. It is helping to solve probabilistic problem. 
so conditioning is one beautiful concept to simple to simplify a problem probabilistic problem so don't take conditioning conditioning like uh, one just one concept it is not having attachment to understand probability it is having very good relation with probability that it is simplifying the probabilistic problem so take uh, this conditional probability conditioning take as an as an computational technique here this one is the computational technique here you will see that how it it will ease out to solve probabilistic problem so once you are having very good idea of conditional probability what you will have so condi through conditioning what you are you introduce some kind of sub subdivision of that uh, bigger probabilistic problem into sub problem through conditioning you have okay then what you have to do you have to introduce total probability total probability total so all these concepts you might have already gone through i think plus 2 you might have already gone through all this but i will try to explain in different approach okay so everyone is having computational capability so that you have to identify and you have to apply once you are having very good idea of conditional probability and uh, total probability then we will talk about bayes theorem in today's life bayes theorem is playing very important role why why bayes theorem is playing very important role no idea. okay no no worry don't worry. don't stress out stress out okay so actually bayes theorem it is talking about relation between prior belief and posterior belief prior probability and posterior probability so what freedom you are having if you don't know anything start with any prior probability law don't know any prior probability but in the process of applying that prior probability you come up with few information you are getting update update from somewhere else that means uh, some someone is providing something so due to that information additional information your probability would be updated once you are starting to apply probability you get few information from various sources that can be seen from the signal from some other thing you get partial that uh, partial information from partial or some information due to that your prior will be updated to posterior so could you give an example I will give uh, right now. I am starting to see. Uh, I will give all the. I will take example here. Like uh, one example is simply I can say that I am giving here a topic of the uh, probability of getting great A is what will be called getting great B. How many times? Simply, you will start with the form. Everyone will have probability of getting getting great. This probability is one by one. You will say one by one by one. Any hundred then what will go one by zero? Okay, very easy. So that that is simple. But what will happen? I am trying to convey things in a systematic way. Everyone, what we can have, trying to understand everything. Okay, there is a pattern that is just as it comes. If you perform this, you will get ready. Yeah. So what would be what would be the problem? Probably getting ready. It will be point zero one or something. Like okay, more than more than that. It will probably be more. So that is the question. Based on if you follow that, what about the technique? I would say that if you follow that technique, the probability of getting great A is is not. If you are following the uh, given technique, what I call that in the right way, the probability of getting great A it will increase. But if you do negative, if you don't follow those rules, what will happen? It will decrease. It will decrease. Probability of getting great A will decrease. So that is that. So how this uh, relation between prior probability and posterior probability uh, you will get it to base base and here that the some kind of 
question you will provide you. You can really get information. You are going to be in a positive age. You are getting opportunity to book. If you are not using it in a right way, you are doing it wrong way. So that is it. Is it clear? Yes. Other example, uh, I will talk uh, numerical example. I will talk when I will discuss this course. Right now, it is just uh, but introduction introduction to this course. So that's it. Now, in second module, we will talk about in with comprehensive regarding distribution. So distribution is one another interesting uh, quantification of randomness. So first person is what he is talking about probability law in a way, algebraic way, mathematical way, algebraic way. When we uh, now, what is that? That is only the first part of it. Numbers. What is this? Numbers. Two bits. Okay. So, I'm going to read. So, I have to come. Everyone is the first part of it. If I ask you, uh, what is the composition of two events? You have to see whether they, they will be intersection or union or something. Something. So, you all might be not in a good level of those operations. Okay, set this operation. So, but, but I say that no. Uh, I will convert those things into numbers. And if it is a number, the number, everyone is able to say, we can add two numbers, we can divide two numbers, we can multiply two numbers. So, all are very uh, very good with numbers. So, once you are converting, you are converting, from the method, convert these those uh, outcome. Probability output into numbers. So once you are having number, so number will have probability. Each number will have certain probability. So there is a distribution of probabilities. So we are having distribution. So that that we call it probability distribution. Okay. Once we are having probability distribution, then next question will be through which law we got that probability distribution. If we got that probability distribution thanks to new power, then we will say that it is in power distribution. If we get a distribution based on Gaussian distribution, then we will say that it is Gaussian distribution. If we get distribution with respect to exponential law, then we will say that it is exponential distribution. If we get distribution with respect to Poisson law, then we will say that it is Poisson distribution. So all these are probability law. So probability law is finally converted into numeric fashion that we call it. Probability law is converting one random uh, phenomenon into distribution. So that's the probability. I just think intensely I have to uh, probability. So you will get probability distribution. So, so there will be various types of probability distribution I will discuss. So simplest one happens to be if a discrete, everyone know about, have you, have you aware of discrete, discrete state or continuous state? What is if you are talking about sequence of numbers? What what is that? It is discrete. Hmm? Discrete set. Discrete set and continuous set. I can discreetly. There is no gap. No. You will uh, that it it may take value from the intervals. Interval, interval. If you are taking set interval uh, as in a set, then it would be a continuous set. If you are taking a set of natural number or uh, sequence, other things, it is a discrete set. That we say that simply we are taking discrete. If you uh, go in a more systematic way, in calculus I might have already discussed what is discrete set, what is continuous set. Discrete set, continuous set, I might have already discussed. So you can. Take idea of that. Uh, just recall from there. It discrete, very simple to convey in the form of uh, limit point. Have you heard the limit point concept? That one is more mathematical rigorous. Eh? What is the limit point of a sequence? What is the limit point of a sequence? Yeah, limit of a function we are calculating at limit point. That rightly I 
you pointed that we are com computing limit at limit point but i am asking what is the limit point you are just uh, talking about application of limit point yes. yeah we are talking about uh, uh, we are talking about application of limit point you are not talking about limit point uh, in sequence i told that uh, definitely that uh, that the, the point where limit is limit is converging limit of sequence is converging that means the limit point of range of the sequence limit point of the range of sequence i think it would be much rigorous you go and uh, recall that calculus it would be much easier otherwise if uh, everyone would be in bulk that time i will explain in detail because right now you all are just four limit point concept is very simple it is just go and recall from the calculus class definitely and then uh, if all would be here that that time i will explain in detail so here discrete this i will talk about discrete random variable continuous random variable then in discrete random variable various discrete uh, probability distribution would come then various continuous probability distribution would come and and uh, all these in one interesting concept would be here random variable so here all the probabilistic phenomena we will try to quantify in numbers so that how which one is quantifying so that mapping we call, we are calling it random variable it is a map from sample space to r converting a outcome an outcome into number the function which is converting an outcome to number that we are calling it random variable so that we will see in module 2 in module 3 we will talk about large sample theory so large sample theory in sense that uh, what is happening that it is very much uh, uh, interesting in sense that central limit theorem and other kind of things will come as I, I, I had mentioned that now so your initial probability law happens to be uniform law okay because you don't know much about uh, other law so um, with simplicity you start with uniform law but what is happening that if you are getting further information further further other things that your sample size is increasing then you will see that your uniform law is converting to normal law or other non simple non uniform law is converging to normal law so that that one is talking about central limit theorem and law of large number it is talking about in sense that uh, it is talking about convergence of uh, average sample average into true average because at hand you won't have all the data you will have few data from few data can you say that uh, what is the distribution of that data from which that uh, distribution that data might have generated you can't say unless uh, i might have mentioned that or it might have mentioned that you can't say that from few data you can't say that from which distribution it might have originated so what is the things that you have to increase the sample size in that process uh, from the sample you can easily compute sample mean sample mean and if you are increasing the sample size sample will it will converge to true mean you don't know true mean in order to compute true mean you need to know distribution true distribution you need to know true distribution is possible to compute from true distribution true mean is, is possible to compute from true distribution but you don't have true distribution it's just a few data and from few data just you can compute sample mean like uh, as i told regarding mp behavior of mp from the behavior of mp what uh, you are getting you are getting uh, sa sample that uh, mp might not be true representative might not be true true representative just you are getting sample behavior of sample behavior okay sample behavior why everyone might not have participated in the voting few people might have participated nota now this day everyone aware of nota are you aware of nota so that situation so that mp is not representing everyone from that constituency it is just one kind of sample what we so that's why if you are willing to know true things then you have to take sample size bigger and bigger and bigger you have to increase the sample size you have to spread awareness to people every uh, vote every uh, you just you have to say that everyone please vote 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 everyone vote so that things would be improved 
so that we will get true representation if everyone is voting then definitely we will get true representation it is not always possible to get true representation without awareness always you know that so that's that is that so last sample theory there in that picture so in model 4 we will talk about uh, yes convolution have you heard the convolution no. convolution is really interesting uh, mathematical technique you can say that it is one kind of product of two function it looks like product of two function very specific kind of product of two function so what is happening that you will have two distribution okay two random variable then if you sum those two random variable so if you are having two random variable that means you know the probability distribution of two random variable both random variable if you are summing those two random variable the my next question would be what is the probability distribution of some of those two random variable the answer you will get it through convolution so convolution is a technique very a specific way to multiply two function very a specific way and it is very uh, fascinating technique convolution is also providing sampling approach how to sample uh, discrete data from continuous signal continuous thing if you are having continuous function how to sample it in a discrete fashion then you have to apply convolution convolution is very interesting a smart technique i will explain in detail in that time so right now it is just uh, it is you will see the picture of the convolution it is just suppose you are having function f and g two function so what is meaning of convolution of this one it is very special a specific a special kind of product of two function f and g so it is written as integral from 0 to t f of t into tau minus t dt it is product of two functions. we are taking uh, two function f and g multiplying these two but in one function we are putting same argument in another function there is a reverse of that tau minus t one is f of t another one is in plus of g of t we are not putting uh, g of t we are putting minus t and we are shifting by tau right shift first re, uh, reflection with respect to y axis minus t what is meaning of minus t you know that it is reflex, reflection with respect reflection of f of t with respect to y axis then you will get t if t is at uh, right place uh, here if t is here so this is the line this, this is if t is here then where would be minus t like t with the same length is left minus t so what is minus t is the reflection of t so if you give a function here gt this one is the gt then where would be minus gt this one yeah minus sorry g of minus t this would be g of minus t this point is t comma f of g of t this point is minus t comma g of minus t so what how this point is reflection of this point with respect to which axis y axis the reflection and when you define convolution of two function so i told that a specific notation it is coming like this way so you can denote it like this 0 to t f of u g of t minus u here u is the dummy variable you know that what is meaning of within integral with respect to that what you are integrating that happens to be dummy variable either you take t or u or so this is the convolution. You will see that how we do it. So it is very powerful computational technique. You will see that it is. So it is helping to find uh, distribution of some of two random variables. Helping to find. So that's where that convolution automatically it will be converted into convolution form. I directly I won't take uh, this formula directly. What I will do? I will try to find if you are having two random variables x and y and uh, under certain a special condition we are summing x and y x plus y my next question would be what is the distribution of x plus y so when we will try to compute the distribution of x plus y that will be converted into in this picture and after that we will name this this name of this one is convolution okay so after at the end of this we will name it convolution name of this one is convolution it is having very interesting application you will see that 
then i will talk about course assessment so there would be four exams in which two quizzes would be there of 10 marks and two terms exam one would be mid term another would be end term everyone might be aware of that pattern in the most of courses same pattern is already applied so now if i talk about distribution of marks 15% it is dedicated to assignment plus your class participation and if time permit i may go for some minor point. but the class remember that class participation is very much important so that's where assignment plus class participation is for no need to note down everything you will get there in you know, classroom and i have already shared this slide as well in prior i have already sent to everyone everyone uh, got this slide yes. yeah. in classroom also through mail i sent it now then 20 percent it is dedicated to quizzes there would be two quiz one quiz one before midterm quiz two after midterm but before enter syllabus is already mentioned there I always follow whatever things I discuss in very first class. I used to follow them. I want to change it, so just try to conceptualize this. Okay, and, and these are the law. What uh, example I had given? Now. Uh, if I'm uh, initially getting grade A, probability of grade A, it was 0 0.01. But if you are following all those law, your in a right way, your probability of getting grade A it will increase. So these are the law. So 25%, uh, these are the hint or partial information, what we call it. So 25% is dedicated to midterm exam. And rest 40% is dedicated to internal exam. And uh, apart from that, as I told that, I will assign few problems, assignment, I will provide assignment, homework, other things, and dead, dead, with deadline. So assignment, homework, everything I will provide there in the classroom, Google Classroom. So, and there you have to submit it. I will provide the results. Uh, sometime it may, I may provide in classroom. If, due to some situation, I may provide in classroom. Otherwise, mostly I will provide assignment homework there in uh, cl Google Classroom. So, you can get it, download and solve it and submit there itself. So, this one is the course assignment. Now, if you talk about uh, references, so as a test, uh, whatever lecture note I will provide, that would be self-sufficient. Self-sufficient if you understand that everything. So that would be self-sufficient. I will provide a very good lecture note. Okay. Then if you are trying to look into textbook, then in library you can get a uh, Seldon Ross book. It is really a very interesting book, Introduction to Probability and Statistics for Engineers and Scientists. You can. The first three chapters are the statistics, so here is statistics when we read The first three chapters of this book were of statistics. Okay, that would uh, I will teach in, the, in different way. That uh, in fact uh, I discuss about uh, statistical inference. So how to there I will talk about uh, statistical models have you gone through statistical models regression regression correlation other kind of things so oh, i just read the uh, what of contains uh, where where you have, where you have gone through process hmm process now in which class in which course that was taught just you were coming to this class class just last night yesterday night i just Okay. Before coming, and I found out that the statistics were in the first three chapters, and after that, okay. Forget about uh, that so kind of sequencing. My that uh, follow the lecture pattern. What I am providing to you. Based on that, go through uh, chapter of that subject. Don't have to follow that book uh, blindly. So content will be provided by me and follow that pattern. Okay. Don't blindly follow that book, follow that. So I will say that oh, what kind of content. Uh, so here syllabus, that's where syllabus I had mentioned that. What was the first uh, module? First module was elementary probability. So follow that first. Then 
if you are having very good understanding of elementary probability, then we will talk about distribution. And there we will apply all those magic concepts what we have already gone through elementary probability. Like there would be conditional, if you understand conditional probability very, in a very intuitive way, in a very better way, then we will talk about conditional distribution. If you understand total probability in a really interesting way, then we will talk about total distribution. If you understand Bayes theorem uh, very well, then we will talk about Bayes theorem for distribution. So everything will be borrowed from there. So model 1 is very important. Why? Because we will talk about extension of that to distribution. So model 1 is very important. And you have already gone through model 1 plus 2. So that rephrasement you need to know. So that's where this is the textbook. Actually, this one is the uh, ascender book. Most of people try to follow this one. That's why I have taken. Otherwise, lecture note would be sufficient. And it is not like that. Uh, I am taking content from this book itself. My own content, content you will see it here. A various experience, experience and other kind of. Books. So other reference books, uh, Populis. It is really very interesting kind of book. You can see that probability random variables and a stochastic process. Many things would be there. So forget about those. Uh, which are not related to you. You just focus on only thing which is your need. Okay. Then third, second reference book, it is uh, Probability by Davenport. Probability and Random Process by Davenport. All these are very interesting books. That's why I have given the name of this. And there is a third book that uh, R.D. Yates, Probability and Stochastic Process. And fourth book, uh, Introduction to probability by Batiscus. And okay, so all these are really interesting books. If you are having, uh, to, you are willing to understand probability in a better way. It is not like that uh, every con concept is very good. Uh, you will see that uh, few concept uh, is very well explained in one book, and then another concept is very uh, well explained in another book. So like that. So textbook happen in a way that it covers the complete content of complete course. So that is the textbook and in a very uh, intuitive way, it depends upon the author, how that author is explained. So if you talk about prerequisite, I won't say that uh, you come up with various prerequisite. So most of prerequisite, whatever basic concept would be there, I will try to explain in this course itself. And if you are coming with that, it's very fine. Otherwise, definitely I, uh, I will, this course is very much, uh, whatever course I try to offer, try to be, always happens to be self-reliant. That means I try to, whatever requisite there, I try to cover in that course itself. In order, in order to understand that concept. So it is very much essential. Otherwise, you can come up with uh, prior ideas. So what are those? So matrix theory, all might have already gone through matrices in plus two. So recall those matrices. What are the role of rows and columns? What is the system of equation, linear, linear equation, system of linear equations and other things? So you can come up with those things. Okay, eigen value, eigen factor. Have you gone through that? So you can just recall those things. So those are very simple kind of things. It would be needed somewhere in, so in distribution. Uh, you will see that. Okay. And one, once you, you are having distribution, then you try to generate new distribution that we are calling it derived distribution. That time you may need calculus, concept of calculus, Jacobian, Jacobian, other kind of things you will see that. In vector calculus, you might have already gone through Jacobian, multivariable uh, calculus. You might have already gone, gone through Jacobian. That means change of transformation. Uh, when you are changing or uh, change of variable, when you are changing variable from x, y to u, v or something like that, that we are calling it change, Jacobian of transformation. You are transforming one plane to another plane, x, y plane to u, v plane. So you are performing one kind of transformation here. So what is the uh, Jacobian of that transformation? How, when transformation is possible to invert? If you are going from XY plane to UV, is it possible to you will come back from UV, UV plane to XY? It is very much helpful in change of uh, order of integration. When you are integrating double, when you are having double or triple integration, sometimes if you are willing to compute double integration, it would be very much difficult to compute. So what you have to apply? If you are applying change of order of integration, if you are changing the variable order, that means in place of x, y, you are taking y, x, y, x, then it is easing out, change of variable. And sometimes what is happening that if you are trying to integrate a function uh, in Cartesian form uh, as a variable of x, y, okay, 
as a function of x y then you will find some difficulty but if you're changing that uh, variable x y into polar coordinate r theta then that term function would be very much easy like e to the power minus x square minus y square if you are trying to integrate it it would be very much complicated but if you convert it into polar coordinate then it will be just e to the power minus r square and there it would be uh, you are there that time uh, yeah. you might have already seen that that time you have to change the, the integrating element aerial element dx dy into r dr d theta r dr d theta r. what is r there r, r is the jacobian of transformation jacobian that through which you are transforming from x y plane to r theta plane so the uh, so those things would uh, basic knowledge you should know just for computational purpose perspective so because in uh, derived uh, derived random variable you will see that in order to compute uh, distribution of that derived random variable so now again what you do when you are having some probabilistic uh, problem you want to solve that in computer so if you are willing to solve in computer you should have basic idea of algorithm and also you need to apply some kind of language programming language so mostly i prefer python you can go for r and other r is very suitable for probability and statistic but python is very much what we call it uh, suitable, suitable to everything so that's why you can go for that so that i hope that uh, otherwise i will cover i won't cover this uh, whatever seg segment would be there what problem i, I need to solve I will solve in Python. That time, I, I, if you, are, you will have any question, you can raise them. Definitely, I would like to answer. Then, course timetable and uh, my detail is already given there. Uh, you can see that course timetable is uh, just uh, note down this uh, timetable. This is the timetable provided by. Uh, I I think it might it might have provided by you. Uh, Sir, that is what? Okay, uh, I will rectify it. I am taking this course for two different uh, section, section A and section B. So, by mistake, I just uh, come up with slide for section B. When you is, uh, you know, 302, my name is Lakshman Mato. My email ID. If you want to com uh, uh, communicate anything, you can communicate through this uh, email. It would be already given in my website. And if you want to visit my home page, so this one is the Google site page, and there you will get most of information regarding previous tech, uh, classes and other kind of related things. Okay. So simply, do we have time? Hmm? Just 10 minutes. So, just I will start few things regarding what is probability. So, first question simply it will come what is probability. So, answer simple uh, simple answer I told that probability is the measure of randomness. So, what do uh, another there are various ways to express it. Probability is the study of randomness, and um, I am trying to put things in a very systematic way uh, like. Uh, once I hear saying that probability is the a study of randomness, next question would be what is the randomness? What is the randomness? So, uh, where we find randomness? So, we have to ask question regarding randomness. So, randomness is of course everywhere around us, everywhere. That is, it is uh, touching almost every segment around us. It is everywhere. Natural science means this chemistry, man. natural science that we call it. And then engineering, then social sciences. Everywhere randomness is coming. What is meaning of randomness? Simply say that uh, uh, we can't predict what will come. What next thing will come, we can't predict. There, there are two kind of uh, uh, phenomena. There are two kind of phenomena. One is deterministic, another one is randomness. Deterministic, we can say that uh, we can say that we know everything. From here, that person will go to there. From here to if we, things, uh, things is deterministic. From here to that person will go there. But if it is random in nature, we can't say that. It may go there, there, there. Various options are there. And probability is trying to quantify those options and trying to take account of those options. Options. Okay. So, 
so if you for example if you take physics then in physics you observe physical quantity temperature pressure all these things if i ask how these physical quantities are coming these these are the outcome of random motion of molecules of particles if you observe any particle whether it is solid liquid uh, fluid fluid means which can flow air and liquid both coming there so uh, if you observe temperature or pressure there so those are outcome of random motion of the molecules within that substance okay so so that is the basic error and due to random motion it is coming okay in physics you can easily observe that if you go in biology and medicine so you may say that uh, mutation thing you may you might have already heard mutation mutation of gene mutation of uh, uh, that uh, simply uh, i'm talking about uh, reproduction process okay so mutation is very important role so mutation is that one is not a deterministic phenomena it is random random phenomena that mutation that happens in a random way that one is a random mutation that's why people can't make uh, baby and something artificially only god know how that thing is that one. so no one able to understand what is the distribution what is the probability law behind the random so it is totally random nature very complicated very complicated kind of uh, random phenomena this one is mutation is very complicated random phenomena. then if you uh, random models it is essential in understanding the spread of disease so if you uh, recently you might have already seen that corona and that kind of thing in this pandemic so disease always uh, if you are trying to understand the disease in order to make vaccine and other kind of things you have to introduce some random models there properly you have to measure the randomness in order to model that random model would come and it is playing very important role also like uh, uh, very de uh, dangerous disease what we call it cancer cancer what is meaning of cancer anyone know uncontrolled yeah uncontrolled growth of uh, tissues tissues or cells cells Cell, cell ha cells happen to be elementary one and tissues just next one okay. yeah yeah so that uh, uncontrolled growth simply one uh, one word answer uh, two word answer uncontrolled growth. then if you go further in electrical engineering then you will see noise noise that one is the universal ban of accurate transmission of information in, if you go in electric, electrical electronics in engineering they are talking about transmission of information tran or uh, communication noise is there so noise is coming there so if you are willing to send one information from here to another place through sub communication by default noise is coming noise is what that one is random in nature it is not you putting noise or uh, sometimes you have to put noise in order to see that uh, like uh, encryption decryption kind of things so that uh, uh, if you are trying to send con one confidential message from here to somewhere else and you are providing the key key of that denoising denoising process denoising key you are providing that then uh, other person can't denoise that the person that is having denoising key only that can do that so noise is coming in the process of transmission then if you come in computer science uh, randomness is very much important in algorithm then one algorithm you will study randomized algorithm randomized algorithm is very powerful in the sense that what you discuss randomness is what we call it random when you write it is like an arbitrary an arbitrary way it is possible that you will ask somebody and ask somebody But you, if you dislike the random pattern, that you based on some probability law, then definitely you use random pattern. So very important. So in computer science, all you will get all these kind of things. So these are the application domain where you can apply probability there, where you see probability modeling. Then if you come in statistics and machine learning, so here what is happening? Happen that what is happening here in this? So that means they interpolate. So there, at night you will have data, and you have to find out from which source those data is coming. From 
this source going to data. So that data only will be said that has to be working in the data. So data what we got it to look in the data. Then we come up with model. So now it is a noisy measurement data. By default, uh, uh, randomness is coming in by default. So whatever regression and other what you discuss that you might have also gone through. So that book might have taught in a very uh, simple way. I will talk about what is the probabilistic uh, attribute. Okay, that I will half probability can be there. So that I will see in regression and other kind of models. Then I will talk about random nature of data. It, uh, you need to know if you want to conclude something from data, you need to know what is the randomness hidden there. It's simply if it, uh, I say that uh, many people are saying that uh, generally error we are taking a, as a um, the distribution of error as a Gaussian distribution. But uh, actually Gaussian distribution, uh, it is not depicting the that error. It is talking about total error. If you are taking total error, then distribution of total error happens to be uh, approximately Gaussian thanks to central limit theorem. So that you will see that in those things. 